Hi, my name is Mark Allison. I'm a designer, builder, and flyer of indoor model aircraft. This video is produced to show folks who are new to aero modeling how to construct and fly an indoor helicopter. This video uh, shows a model that conforms to the rules of the 2010-2011 Science Olympiad season for those who wish to participate in that competition. This video is sponsored by the National Free Flight Society and co-sponsored by Bob Stalick and Jack Schaefer. This is a companion video to a previously produced DVD called Building and Flying an Indoor Model Airplane. Uh, this DVD shows many of the indoor uh, modeling techniques and materials used for whether you're building an airplane or a helicopter. And uh, you may want to obtain this one uh, to get a more complete understanding. Uh, has more detail on some of the things like uh, uh, balsa stripping and weighing balsa wood and, and some of the other tools involved. And uh, to prepare you for future Science Olympiad events, which will probably include uh, airplanes again. If you participate in the helicopter event in seasons following the 2010-2011 Science Olympiad, you'll need to get, obtain uh, the rules for that year's event uh, from your science instructor. The rules are changed from year to year uh, in order to, to encourage beginner participation. Kits and plans are available from indoor modeling websites and uh, some are more complex and more appropriate for people who have more experience, others are more appropriate for beginners. We'll include a list of these websites and resources as well as a glossary of terms that are special to aero modeling in a downloadable form on this DVD. Okay, we're going to show you some of the parts of the uh, helicopter uh, so you can identify those. Uh, they'll be described on the plans as well. This is the lower rotor. This is the upper rotor. Uh, this uh, is one of the tips. These have a slight angle to them on this particular model. Uh, these uh, tips are flat in the same plane as the, uh, as the rotor. Um, this is the motor stick. This is called the boom and this part is usually called the post. It goes vertically. This is what helps it stand off uh, from the ceiling. And if you look at this end here, this is the, uh, the bearing, and the bearing uh, holds the rotor shaft, and the rotor shaft has a little hook in there to uh, hook the motor up to. And you'll also notice that there's some glass beads and washers here to reduce friction. Um, if you look at this end here, uh, here's the um, rear motor hook and this is the rubber motor. Um, these parts of the uh, rotor blade are called the spars, that's uh, front and back, and these cross pieces are called ribs. The center rib is actually called the hub, and that's true of uh, both the upper rotor and the lower rotor. Okay, I want to describe uh, a technical term called helical pitch. Helical pitch refers to the difference in angle of the blade as you go farther out from the center uh, to the ends. And uh, this particular model has uh, what we call 8-inch pitch. And what that means is as the rotor turns, it will go through 8 inches of air theoretically. The uh, helical pitch blade, the one that has this angle change, is more efficient than a flat blade which has the same angle all the way out. These are the building jigs for the rotor blades. Uh, this one is for the lower rotor and it has a pitch uh, it's going this way. This one is the lower, uh, the upper one, and it goes that way. And uh, uh, these are the angled pitch templates. And this one here is the three-inch radius station. This one here is the six-inch radius station. And this is for the uh, eight-inch pitch uh, rotor blades. And uh, this will be uh, a fairly bit smaller than the uh, forty-centimeter. Uh, blade length that was uh, the maximum blade length required by the 2010-2011 rules. 
This uh, plan is downloadable from the DVD you're watching. And what you want to do is print this out, uh, maybe size it uh, at a copier uh, store uh, so that it conforms to the, uh, the size that we show here. And then you're going to want to glue stick this to some heavier cardboard. Uh, this is uh, 1 16th inch. Uh, this is artist mat board, but you can use any 1 16th inch cardboard. And uh, once you get those laid out, uh, this is the start of the uh, uh, jigs and we're going to be building off of these jigs. Um, you'll do the same thing with the angled pitch templates. Uh, you'll download them, uh, get them to the right size, and uh, glue stick them to the uh, cardboard here. And I like to use the thicker uh, glue stick. It works better and faster. And so what I'm going to do is show you uh, how to cut these out. And the best thing is to use a, an X-Acto knife with a new blade and we're going to use a steel ruler so we don't cut into it and get right over it so that you can see what you're doing and this has to be very accurate so do these cuts very accurately um, the lines were made deliberately thin on these so that you can uh, uh, know exactly where to cut the more accurately you do this the better your helicopter will fly okay let's see if we can free this up now All right, got that one. And we're going to notch this very carefully. This notch has to be the exact correct height that is shown on this uh, template. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice through part way uh, through that line there. You don't want to cut it off. You want to just slice through it so that it can bend easily on that angle. So a couple of uh, light slices like this and then you can take that and bend it like this to a 90 degree angle and then these are going to be glued in these uh, positions that you see on the uh, building jig so for example this is the long one that sits right on the plan like that and we're going to glue that in place and uh, you can use uh, the carpenter's glue uh, that we've shown here and um, show you how to do that. You can use thin carpenter's glue. This is a little uh, can lid with some glue in it and we're going to dilute it just a little bit like that and we'll use this for building the jig as well as building the airplane. I don't like to use the uh, Duco cement or the Ambroid. Uh, those have ketones in them and they're really bad for your lungs, liver, uh, brain. Uh, let's avoid those. Once they're in position and dried, then we'll start building. These are the spars that we're going to be using to build uh, both rotor blades. And I'm going to show you how to set those up. Uh, these are 1 16th inch medium density balsa wood. If you want more detail on uh, how to grade wood. Uh, that first DVD that we showed you uh, will show you that. This is just using ordinary um, tape. This is invisible tape. And what you want to do is you want to kill it, kill the uh, adhesion of it a little bit by putting it on anything that's cotton like that, your shirt or pants. And we're going to tape this one in position. You don't want to tape it right near the, where the rib goes, but you can tape it just outside that here. And we're, we're going to do the, uh, the lower spar first. Again, you can kill the tape like that. And we'll tape that in position. We also want to put a piece of tape near the hub. And the hub is where the, uh, the two come together. And now we're going to locate this on top of the notches where you have uh, the notches are on those uh, angled pitch templates. And that just wraps right over that and holds that right on that notch. OK, 
Okay, here's a piece of wood that we're going to use for uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, smaller ribs. Uh, we're going to use the same um, medium density wood for the, uh, uh, the outer ribs. And you can just go like this, break that to approximately the right length to start with. And then I want to show you um, my favorite uh, cutting tool is uh, half of a uh, double-edged razor blade. And you want to break this carefully. What we're going to do is tape the edge so it's not going to grab us. And tape the other edge. And then we're going to break that and then we'll take the tape off and we'll have an a excellent cutting tool. Okay. So this is for safety, and you can take this like this, break it, and break it like that, and we're just going to use one at a time, and just peel that tape right off. Now you have an excellent uh, thin blade, and that's really important because it goes through the wood much easier. Here's another essential tool that you'll need uh, to do this, and uh, it's, um, it's a white rubber eraser and uh, I'm going to show you how to use this. What we're going to do is we're going to cut off a piece of this and we're going to angle it so that it'll slide underneath here like that so that we have a, uh, a cutting surface that's raised up and uh, that's essential because you can't press down on these spars without breaking them. Okay, so uh, there will be an illustration that shows you uh, the dimensions to cut this uh, so that you get one of these pieces here and I've marked this uh, with dots on it so I can see it when it's uh, on something white like that. Okay, so this is angled and so what you do is you slide this in underneath just till it touches the spar like that and then that gives you a, a cutting surface or it gives you support for the spar where you're cutting. Okay, now the first the first cut on this rib is going to be down here right over the spar and what you do is you match this angle of this side of the spar because that's where that that joint is going to be so this is angled correctly this way and you just push down with that nice sharp thin blade like that and you get an angled cut and this is um, I'm going to clean that uh, end up a little bit here that cut exactly matches that spar now if you end up uh, with a, um, a joint that is not exactly uh, square to that, you might consider recutting it. Um, and if you're having a lot of trouble with it, don't be discouraged because we can put some glue in there. As long as it touches both here and here, we put some glue in there and I can also show you how to uh, put a little reinforcing tab on that. So, uh, but these take very little time. There's only uh, eight spars on the whole uh, aircraft so uh, take your time and if you have to recut another one go ahead and do that try it several times and you'll get the hang of it this one here now is supported um, by that rubber eraser and I line this up over the uh, spar like that cut down and if you look at that angle it this way and then start to pull that out so that it can lower it down. There it is. And you want that right over the plan showing where the rib is. Okay? And that's where that rib gets glued in. Okay? Before we start gluing them in, we're going to need to put some uh, little wax paper strips under the ends on the uh, bottom spar uh, so that the uh, ribs don't end up getting glued to the plan. And you can see I've put some uh, wax paper under each of these uh, ribs there. Or where the ribs go and uh, so we're going to start we're going to do double gluing and uh, as if you want to review that uh, process on the uh, first DVD uh, you can do that and so this is the a single gluing and we're going to line that up touch it right there line it up on the over the plan where that rib goes so it touches here as well and then we're going to remove that and we'll let that dry. And we're going to do that for uh, all of the ribs. This rib is dry now, so we're going to uh, apply a second uh, coat of glue on there. And I want to show you another
probably easier way to apply glue. This is uh, diluted glue. It's got maybe one third uh, water in it. And it's in a syringe that has the, uh, the tip ground down so it's not very sharp. And you can see that it's uh, a lot more precise as far as putting glue on. And this doesn't need to be much glue because there's already glue on there that's dried. And this is gonna just, it'll take very quickly. So you set that in position push that up against uh, the spar and do the same thing back here. I'm going to back that off a little bit and make sure it lines up over the rib position. Uh, get right over it so you can see that uh, dotted line where that rib position is and then you let it dry. The center rib is actually called the hub, and we're gonna show you how to uh, measure that. You could go like this and just mark it with your pencil, like that. It just has to fit uh, without uh, distorting the spars. You can, that's probably the easiest way is to mark it like that. Or conversely, you can take a ruler like this and set it on top of the lower spar and get your head down so you can see and it's just over half an inch 1 16th over half an inch there so that would be 9 16th and what you do is you just measure that let's turn this around like this and you put that at 9 16th and you can just cut off the end of this ruler here like this line this up on the end of the ruler and press down and cut and now you've got that center hub and that one you also uh, double glue into that position here now this has to be vertical so what i want to do is show you uh, that position i'm going to put a little bit of glue on here uh, we're going to end up double gluing this uh, but i want you to see how to get that lined up so it's perfectly vertical. That's really important because otherwise uh, the blade will be tipped like this in relation to the uh, motor stick and that's not good. So we lay that in like this and we're gonna use the corner of our little uh, cutting uh, jig here. You can use the corner and you line it up sideways and you can even use it to push like this See how that's lined up vertically now? That's what we want. And make sure it sits under the uh, top spar and right on top of the lower spar. Now it won't be lined up uh, square-wise. It won't be lined up with either this direction or that direction, but that's not important. What's important is that the thing is vertical right in the middle, okay? So there's the hub and you would take that out and uh, I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'll take that out and we'll double glue that and get that in position again. The uh, uh, rotor blades are dried now, and we have the, uh, the hubs on both of those here and here. Before you remove them from the uh, building jigs, you want to make sure that you mark these. This is, this is uh, marked the center of that hub on the outside here, and I've also marked it with an L. That ind indicates that it's a, the lower rotor, so you don't get these parts confused. This one is marked with a U. Uh, for the upper rotor and you can see that I've also uh, marked where that uh, shaft is going to go um, on both of these. Right. If you have a, uh, a joint here that uh, you don't like because it's not as tight as you wanted it to be, um, you can put a little bit of glue in there to fill that in and also you want to uh, do something like this. You want to cut a, a strip of paper. This is just bond paper cut a strip of paper about a sixteenth of an inch wide like that and about half of that'll do for wrapping around uh, that. You can take this and you can glue it and wrap around that joint like that and that, that'll reinforce that joint. Um, another alternative way of doing that is you take a little triangle gusset and uh, you can glue that to the spar and then the point of that gets glued uh, to the rib, okay? So that's, that's how you reinforce those uh, joints uh, if they're kind of weak uh, because you didn't get a, uh, an exact fit. All right, 
Um, I'm going to remove these and we're going to start covering these. What you'll need for the covering is the uh, very lightweight uh, vegetable bag that you can get uh, from grocery stores. And I'm just going to open this up and show you. Cut that. It's very thin, very lightweight. It's easy to work. Um, there are lighter materials, but they have a tendency to, to uh, have a lot more static electricity to them, and they're, they're a bit harder to work with. So we're just going to strip this lengthwise, open it up, and here's a good idea. I've uh, cut this uh, out of cardboard. This is a, a template that will give us uh, a little bit of overlap on that um, um, covering piece. So you can use this as a, a way of cutting these um, pieces that we're going to be using for covering. Let's go like that that and that and that and you can do all four that way okay so watch this what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this uh, this is the latex contact cement and we're going to put some in here we're going to dilute it this is just spraying it with water and we're going to use this to mix mix that I'm trimming these uh, ends off like that in preparation for covering these. And we've got the, uh, the glue uh, diluted with water. And you want to make sure that uh, you know which part is on the underside, which part is the top side. We're going to be covering the bottom side of these. And my reasoning is that uh, that will create less drag as these are spinning uh, if these uh, bottom areas are covered because there's more pressure on the bottom of the rotor as it's spinning. So that's the reason I'm going to cover the bottom. So I'm going to turn that over like this. And I'm going to use my brush. And uh, to save the brush, you want to get it uh, wet first and put a little bit of detergent in it. And then you want to make sure you rinse that carefully after each uh, application of glue. Okay, so we're going to do one of these panels here, and you put the glue along the flat parts out here. And on the rib, on that end rib as well. And here, you put it on the flat part and on the inside here, because it's going to have to wrap around that corner a little bit in order for it to... Uh, follow the change of that uh, helical pitch. Getting this part here. Also want to cover the hub on one side. You're not going to cover the hub on both sides. And we're going to take this piece here like this and turn this over. Line it up like that over that, that cut piece. And you want to leave a little bit of extra room on the end there. Push it down, get one of these sides adhered all the way along, like that, and then you can pick it up and carefully smooth it out over the end ribs. So you're smoothing this out, and then when you get to the, the part where it's narrower in here, uh, the first thing you try to do is get it to adhere on the outside, and then you can kind of push that in. A little bit. You just have to mess with it until it, it uh, holds. What you are trying to do is cover this inner panel here and then you can let it dry and any of the parts that are that are not sticking well you can add a little bit of glue to that later. So that's no problem. Okay so that's how you cover uh, each of these blades and you do you do one half at a time. Both rudders are covered now and uh, they've dried. You let them dry at least an hour and uh, then it'll cut more easily. The, uh, you'll be able to trim that off more easily. We're going to use a brand new blade. Here's the uh, other half that I uh, cut off earlier. 
And so a brand new blade will make uh, a much cleaner job of this. And so what you do is you just uh, slice into the covering material like this and use the, the uh, spar as your guide and go slowly so you're not going to cut into the spar. Or if you do, you can stop. And you want to trim that right along the edge of the spar like that. And you just keep going till you've got the entire blade freed from this uh, the excess plastic on the outside. The covering on both of these is now trimmed and uh, what we're going to do next is uh, put the rounded tips on and what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, we're going to use a compass uh, you can also use uh, things that have the right size for them things laying around uh, look at measuring cups um, glasses uh, can lids things like that what you're going for is the uh, the correct uh, diameter and on the plan uh, at that rib station it looks like two, two and five eighths. So you can measure a can lid, and that one just happens to be two and five eighths. Okay, so you can use this. You don't have to go out and buy a compass, in other words. So you can either use it like this and center it, and then draw your line around that, or if you already have a compass, you can use one of those, and that's what I'm gonna use here. Uh, I've drawn some lines, just some guidelines. This is a center line, and then this is a, uh, a cross line here. And what I'm going to do, uh, this will dent the wood uh, so you can see where you're cutting. It actually won't mark it because I think that, uh, that pencil lead on there is too hard. And we'll do another one right here like this. And we'll cut those out using a X-Acto knife. all the way around the, the corner here. These don't have to be perfect, they just have to be close enough. Okay, and the grain, you can see the grain is running this way. We want that grain running off the tip like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut that across here and cut that in half and we have two tips. The lower rotor will do first, uh, simpler. And uh, what we're going to do is just apply this tip and glue it to, uh, to that outer rib. And we're going to leave it in the same plane as the rest of the blade. In other words, uh, this one won't have an angle to it. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to do that double gluing. And the first gluing goes like this. And we'll lay that in there just to get some glue on it and we'll set that aside to dry. Okay, on the, on the upper rotor, what you're gonna have to do, since the, this is the top of the upper rotor, uh, we, have, we have a little bit of a problem. We're gonna have to put an angled piece on here and we have plastic covering uh, part of that bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, use a piece of uh, sandpaper, sandpaper block, and we're going to carefully do it like this. We're going to carefully bevel a slight angle in it. What we're doing is we're actually cutting the plastic uh, back to about halfway on that end rib. Once we get that uh, balsa wood exposed out from under the plastic, uh, then what we can do is put that piece on at an angle. Okay, so you can take a look at it, look at it carefully, make sure that you've exposed enough of the, uh, the wood there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set this up like this. This part can, can sit flat and we're gonna, that's going to be sitting here like this. I'm just going to show you the positions first. And then we'll use a, um, a piece of balsa wood like this. What you want to do is raise this up to about a half an inch. This is a half inch piece of uh, balsa wood, so we'll put this right on the end like this. Let's set that up like that. 
Actually, let's tape it in position. That'll be easier. Okay, so we're going to set this up so it's vertical. Lay this against the top of that. And here's where we're going to be gluing it in there, just like that. Okay, so what you'll do is you put some glue right along this edge here where the wood is exposed on that beveled edge, like that. And then lay that in position. So it's flat on, this part is flat on the table, and this is up, raised up on the tip by that uh, block of balsa wood, okay? And then you release that, let that dry, and then we're gonna do second gluing to finish that up. We've got the uh, tips uh, attached now, and this is the upper rotor. You can see that it's got that uh, angle. It's a half inch of dihedral uh, there. And looking at the bottom one, these are the tips are flat and in the same plane as the uh, end of the rotor blade. Okay, what we're going to do, since the, um, the lower rotor is going to be attached to the rotor shaft, and this one's going to spin by virtue of the uh, uh, motor turning the rotor shaft, we have to drill a hole uh, through the hub from the top to the bottom. Now, uh, what we're going to use is this is a piece of the same wire that we're going to use for the uh, rotor shaft, and it's uh, 25 thousandths of an inch, and you can get that. You can either order that online, uh, or you can go down to your local hobby store, and it's called music wire. And when you cut it like this with your um, uh, cutting tool, when you cut it like that, it leaves a very thin, uh, sharp uh, blade on the tip, and we're going to use that to drill. If you have um, uh, what they call jobber's drills or micro drills, and you have a pin vise, that's ideal if you, if you have that, but you don't need it. Uh, this is just chucked into the same uh, X-Acto knife handle as we use for the blades. So watch what I'm going to do. This is sticking out just a little bit uh, longer than halfway, like that. And I've marked the center there, and I've marked the center on this side. What we're going to do is we're going to drill through both sides like that, and then we'll have a straight hole that goes right through the center of that 16th inch piece. Um, if this is too difficult for you, you can also uh, run the shaft on the outside, the rotor shaft on the outside. You might have to notch this a little bit so it gets closer to the center of the, uh, of the rotor blade. Okay, so watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to set that against that marking on there. And make sure that you line this up, keep this lined up. You can do it by eye and start twisting and pushing in deeper and just keep going like that. And then we're going to do that from the other side. We've got it marked there. And we're going to start there just like that. Okay, now we've got a hole right through the center of that. What I want to show you next is the way that you can determine uh, the right density of the wood for the uh, motor stick. Some people call it a fuselage motor stick. It's all the same. Okay, so I've got several pieces here <coughs> that are cut <coughs> approximately to the length that we need. And what I'm going to do, I've got a, uh, this is a 40 gram weight. It's uh, eight nickels. Each nickel is uh, half a gram, or I'm sorry, each nickel is five grams. And so what you do is you just set this on something that raises it up a little bit. Clothespin works great. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that on there. This deflects a little bit. That's a good, that's a good stiff uh, motor stick, okay? And uh, so you can mark that one. That's a fairly heavy one. Let's check this one out, okay? Put that on the end. Oops. That's a little bit too light, okay? You could use it, but, you know, we're, we're talking about a uh, potentially a, an eighth inch uh, rubber motor, and uh, we want it a little bit stiffer than that. Here's one that's sort of in between the two, and you can see that that deflects just a little bit, a little bit more than the heavy one. 
and uh, so we can use either the medium or the uh, the heavy one okay all right I'm going to show you how to do a uh, bearing and the little standoff that we need uh, so that the uh, the rubber motor has um, space to turn and so what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of the uh, same uh, stock that we're using for the fuselage and we're going to measure this bearing first we need it to be a quarter of an inch long and so what we're going to do is we're going to cut off a piece that's a quarter of an inch long like that Okay, and then we want to measure uh, 3 16 because that'll give us enough room for that uh, motor to turn. 3 16 to the center of the hole. So we cut it like that. And now we're going to turn this piece up on its end like this, and we're going to notch the top of this. Do this carefully. Uh, you, if you want to, you can uh, do a, a center cut first, like that, and then you cut a V-cut angle it in like this and like this and now we have a V cut we're going to lay this on like this and it'll be attached to the uh, bottom of the fuselage or the uh, motor stick like that I'm going to show you how to do a, uh, another type of bearing. This is an aluminum bearing uh, using a 1 16th inch thick aluminum tube and we're going to insert the 25 thousandths inch um, music wire into that and that forms a, uh, a cutting surface on the inside and you can just use the heel of the blade back here like this and just roll it back and forth like that and it will cut right through that aluminum tube. And now we have an aluminum bearing, okay? Another thing that you might want to do with this is you can rough up that surface a little bit so it'll adhere to the glue a little bit. Just do a light uh, angled rolling cut like this and then angle it the other way. And what that does is it puts a little bit of uh, a scratch on the surface of that and makes it a little bit rougher so it'll grab the glue better, okay? Now I've done, this is just a test sample. Uh, I've used the latex contact glue and uh, the aluminum bearing and uh, wrapped that with thread and then just coated it with the uh, latex contact glue and it's a very tough um, uh, glue and you can see I'm pushing really hard against my thumbnail it's not going to move so that's a, another alternative we're going to use that same method to uh, wrap that uh, nylon bearing all right so what I've done is I've cut this, uh, this is the standoff, and this is the piece that goes on the um, bottom of the uh, front of the fuselage, and it's going to end up going like this. Let me set it down like this so you can see. So that's what we're going to do, and we're going to glue it, and we're going to wrap it with the uh, thread, and, uh, and then we'll start working on the rotor shaft. So what I've done is I've glued this uh, standoff, uh, double glued it using uh, carpenter's glue. And what I want to do is uh, rough up the shaft of this uh, bearing, this nylon bearing a little bit, so it'll hold the glue better. Do the same thing that we did on the aluminum tube, like that, get it roughed up. And then we're going to use some latex glue. This is that contact cement. And you can just use it full strength. Let's see, I'll squeeze it out here. And then I can use an applicator like this. And I'm just going to coat that area with the glue. You can put a fairly thick layer in there. Like that. And then don't get any glue in the, in the uh, hole. 
it's not going to make much of you'll be able to clean it out but just to avoid trouble okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit more glue on the outside all the way up and down this whole area here including the top of the uh, bearing and then we're going to take thread and you just hold it with your thumb over here like this and then just start wrapping it up and over like that and then we're going to put an extra coat of glue on top of that and that'll hold that really firmly in position even with a fully wound motor okay let's get this down lower here there we go all the way to the end thread doesn't weigh very much so you know don't hold back make sure it's really tightly wrapped okay and then when you when you think you've got enough on there come over here like this and we're going to put another uh, coating of glue over the thread all the way along here and that's going to make that a very very strong bearing and we're going to let that dry uh, this glue takes a while to dry and for full strength I I would guess that you should probably uh, let that dry overnight okay so there's there's our bearing next step that we're going to do is uh, show you how to uh, make a rotor shaft and um, this is the uh, aluminum bearing this is the one with the nylon bearing they both work equally well and uh, so what I'm going to do uh, you want to um, in order to prevent the uh, motor from getting cut uh, on the end of that loop there what we're going to do is we're going to just use some sandpaper and I'm just twisting and rolling this and holding it at an angle on the sandpaper, we're just going to try to reduce that sharp edge to a more rounded uh, end of that uh, piece before we do that, bend that hook. That's round now, so that won't cut the motor. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a pair of uh, needle nose pliers and we're going to bend, hold this down here, we're going to bend this that way on the end and then put your pliers underneath like this and bend the reverse way like that and keep going like that so that you have a loop like this a little hook and I'm going to open this one up a little bit like that so we can get the motor in there and just play with it till you get the shape that you like all right that's ready to uh, insert now in the back of the uh, bearing and that's how we're going to do it we're going to insert this through the back and this is a good time to check to make sure that uh, this and this are parallel because we don't want any uh, difference in in the uh, thrust line okay so we're going to pull this up like that and we're going to start adding a few things to this we're going to take a, a glass bead um, if you don't have glass beads or you can't get them uh, that's okay you can use another item that we're going to show you and this is a uh, to try to reduce the friction at the uh, bearing because it's going to be under pressure this is a little washer and uh, I'll show you how to make those in just a second let me just insert this and slide that on there so you can use a couple of beads or you can use a couple of these washers now where the washers come from real simple you can take uh, any kind of packaging plastic like this and just punch one of these out like that okay and what we're going to do with this uh, we're going to use that same uh, drilling technique just lay that down like this hold it down put that right in the middle spin it till it goes through and now we've got a, uh, a hole drilled in that okay so that's going to be another washer you just need uh, a couple of these washers uh, just to reduce that friction at the bearing Okay, and then you're going to slide this forward, slide those bearings down, or the uh, washers down, and we're going to take the lower rotor, make sure that uh, you have it oriented correctly, 
<clears throat> the shaft is going to go through the center of that. So here we go. Slide that on. And pull this all the way back like this. And we're going to pull it all the way back even though we're going to have a little bit of room up here where we make the bend so that uh, there'll be a little bit of room for the hook to turn like this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is pull that forward again, and I'm going to make a bend right about here. <clears throat> and that'll just be a 90 degree bend. Don't hold the rotor, hold the wire when you do this. Bend it 90 degrees, like that. And then we're going to cut that off. We're going to cut it off, oh, give ourselves maybe a half an inch. Cut that off. Watch this carefully. Hold this. Whenever you're working with wire, make sure you have it all under control so it's not going to fly off and hit somebody in the eye. Pinch that. Okay. And then we're going to do one more bend here. <clears throat> if you look at this, uh, if, uh, if you bend this very end down at 90 degrees, then you'll have something that will actually uh, turn that rotor. Okay, I'm going to make that second bend, and I'm pushing on the, uh, the back here, bending that down at another 90 degree angle, like that. And then we're going to pull this out like this, and if you, sh if you turn that, you can see that that now is going to be able to apply pressure and, and spin that rotor. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to reinforce that with a little piece of balsa wood over the top. take a look here. I've added this piece of balsa. I notched it just a little bit to accommodate that um, uh, the shaft that uh, turns 90 degrees and then this is uh, double glued with carpenter's glue balsa to balsa and so that's going to hold that in position. What we're going to do now is we're going to show you how to put the uh, uh, the motor hook, the fixed motor hook in the back and what you do is you insert that like this, take your pliers and push it all the way through like that and it doesn't have to go through straight uh, it'd be ideal if you could but you're going to push that all the way through like this and then you're going to take this end bend it 90 degrees like that and then bend it 90 degrees again and what you're doing is you're forming kind of a little staple there like that and then you push that back down into the wood like that. Let's use this. And now it's seated in that um, wood like that. And then the back part here, what you're going to do is just do a simple twist like this. And if you want to, you can measure this so that that's, you want that uh, one part of the hook there to be about 3 sixteenths of an inch off of the bottom of the uh, fuselage. That's so that the, uh, the rubber motor lines up on that. And then we're going to put in this gusset here, like this, and we'll double glue that with uh, carpenter's glue. Then we're going to do a thread wrap uh, to hold that uh, staple part down, and uh, we'll coat that with the um, uh, latex glue. All right, the glue is dried on this now, and we're going to uh, attach the boom. And uh, I've got this marked so that it, uh, it sets right in here like that. And we're going to double glue that piece uh, on the boom. And then we're going to trim off some of this excess wood here because we don't need the extra weight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to also attach the, uh, the upper rotor to this. Okay, that's double glued now and dry and what we're going to do is we're going to um, cut off the, the back part of this uh, motor stick that doesn't need to be there. Do this carefully so you don't cut the boom off. Actually you could probably have done that, uh, done this before you put the boom on but uh, we're going to slice off this excess piece of wood here. Go slow, carefully, slow down there. All right.
All right, we're gonna uh, attach the upper rotor to the boom, and I've got it marked here, and I've got it single glued already. And uh, uh, what we're gonna do is put this in position like this. We've got the second gluing on there now. It's very light. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something square to line this up with. So we're gonna use this cutting mat here uh, to line the bottom rotor along the top of the cutting mat and the fuselage along the side of the mat here. And what we're doing by doing that is making sure that the, the uh, rotor blade, uh, the plane of the rotor blade is perfectly square to the fuselage and the boom. And when you want to, what you want to do is you want to hold that in position uh, till it really sets. Hold it for two or three minutes and then you can set it aside. To develop full strength, uh, the carpenter's glue needs about eight hours of, of drying time before you start playing with this. Otherwise, the thing's going to pop off. Okay? All right, here's the moment of truth. Uh, we're going to see if this uh, uh, airship has uh, been built lighter than the uh, four gram minimum weight, uh, in which case we can add a little bit of weight to it. If it's overweight, then we'll have to do some uh, shaving down of some of the corners of the, of the uh, motor stick and maybe thin the boom, etc. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this spring scale, which you can get online. They're pretty cheap. And we're going to clip that to a hard part on here, like that. And read that scale. What does it say? Hey, hey, it is 3.6 3 grams. So if we add um, uh, 0.2 grams to that, two-tenths of a gram to this will be at the minimum weight. So we uh, underbuilt it slightly, and that's great. All right, we're going to add a little bit of putty to this. And you want to add it at the bottom because you want to keep the center of gravity low. It makes for a more stable flight pattern. And let's see if that's enough. Just over four grams, so that's just right. Okay, you can take a little bit off. You can get it right to four grams. And uh, then it'll pass inspection at the contest. I'm going to show you what happens um, or what you can do uh, if you end up with a model that has a lot of really wild uh, swinging type of uh, rotation like this as it's flying. Um, uh, what you want to do is analyze and determine what direction that's happening. So if this is going like this, that is from underneath, that's a counterclockwise direction. So you see it's coming around this way. So you need to use an opposing force to that. So you need something that will push it back the other way. So what we can do is we can make a, an adjustment in the thrust line. Now what you have to do to do that is it's radical surgery. You have to make a slice like this into the fuselage and then uh, all the way through the fuselage but not uh, you you leave a part of it attached and then you can just twist this so that the thrust line is changed in direction and I'm going to show you one that we've done that to take a look at this you see this has been adjusted twice you can see that there's uh, this is one cut now the cut doesn't go all the way through the fuselage it just cuts oh maybe three quarters of the way through and the same thing with this one this was the second attempt to uh, to get this one to straighten out and uh, it works so that's a way that you can uh, keep it from uh, doing a very wild swinging thing. If it's, if it's moderate, uh, you're, you're going to see this uh, type of uh, flight pattern typically. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fly up pretty straight to the ceiling. Then the bottom is going to start to rotate in one direction. And then halfway through, as the torque wears down on the, on the motor, the gyroscopic forces are not as strong. And so it may even start to, uh, the bottom will start to rotate the other way. Okay, if you have a lot of problems and it still isn't working, what you can do is experiment with veins, and these are just uh, shapes kind of like the tip, and these veins can be attached here or at the bottom, and you want to try, or you could, you could even put them on the side of the fuselage here. What you're doing is you're increasing the side area here. Now, 
for this particular model, I don't think it needs it because this area here that we've covered in the middle, uh, that takes care of the side area and it helps to uh, stabilize the flight pattern. That's how you build an indoor rubber-powered helicopter and here's how you fly it. Happy flying and happy landings. Thank you.